Hello and welcome to a midweek edition of Wardy's Waffle. Hope you're all having a decent week. You can see we've got a dry yard at the minute and blue skies, which is good. But because of the rain last week, we still can't get on the land to do anything apart from some spraying. Uh, but in this update, uh, I thought I would actually show you when I tried a Land Rover Defender um, uh, about 10 days ago. My Discovery went in for a service and I had a Defender for the day. And at the same time, I went to uh, see how our new Housham sprayer was coming on uh, that they're building at Woodhall Spa. So I took the Defender uh, to there, so I gave it a good run out. So I give you a bit of a, um, a, bit of a, a motorist uh, review on the Defender and what I thought to it. And then also a look at the Housham sprayer and how they're getting on building the new one. That's it uh, um, on the intro. Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to the channel. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you at the end. End. I've just come to Marshall Land Rover in Lincoln to bring my discovery for a service for the day. When I bought it, I'd got six free services and this is the last one of, uh, of that. And it's six years old of the vehicle is. And I've got this new Defender for the day to have a go and see what it's like. So we'll give you a bit of report on this. So here we are back in the showroom. Some of you remember this from when I did my video two or three weeks ago when I came to have a look. So I've just got my coffee here. Nice service area here. You can see where the 10 million pounds from the depot goes to when you look around here. So that's the Land Rover side there. And then that is the Jaguar side there. I'm just off to Housham Sprayers um, to just check the progress of our new sprayer and see how it's coming along. So I'm now on the road um, in this Defender. Straight away, you can see we've got the middle headrest in the way. We've got the headrest there in the way. These on the back seats. They can be folded down, and I'll do those in do those in a minute. But can you hear this clicking sound? You might not be able to hear it. I'm not sure. Um, there's a clicking sound in the back, and I don't know what it's doing. It's it's just annoying. So that's got an issue which I don't like. Nice enough vehicle, but when you're driving here, you've, you're looking forward and your periphery vision here, all you see is two great big black door mirrors, and they are huge. And I don't know why they couldn't make them aerodynamic like the, um, like the uh, my, my Discovery is. And because they're black, and they're just huge, and the field of vision on the passenger one, and I'll show you in a minute, is really narrow, and I just think it's a really poor design. Nice enough inside and everything, but I just think it's poor enough, um, poor design. There's no sunroof in it, which I would always have a glass sunroof to bring light in. And it's a black interior you can see as well, which obviously my discovery is a lighter interior. And I do like the lighter area feels that um, that you get from having lighter interiors. So I'll just flick the headrest down um, and you'll just see then what it's like. So we do that with that one, that there. and then put this one down. Yes, you can see it's made a difference, but can you still see you've got the big spare wheel sticking up there. You've still got part of the headrest um, from here. Uh, actually, I'll just pull up here and I'll just show you the view um, in, uh, in the mirror because that's actually not, the mirror view isn't as good as the view you're seeing here. So that's the view looking forward. You can see what I mean about these great big mirrors. When you're looking forward like that, all you can see is this huge door mirror. Now, there, look how narrow that view is there, that door mirror. It is really narrow view there, um, and huge top to bottom that way. Now, the view out the mirror here, you can see straight away now, when you're looking through there, the spare wheel on the back door, how much it blocks out. It blocks out at least a third of that window. And to my mind, if I was having one of these, I wouldn't have the spare wheel on the back door. And I do know that years ago, the hinges used to go and whether they're any better or not, I'm not sure. So looking at the dashboard, nice layout inside here and not quite up to um, the Discovery, but it's this one's got head up display. So this is where there's a little camera uh, here that sends information onto the screen. You can see it there just flashing. That's because I'm recording it. And so we're in a 60 mile an hour zone 
but obviously I'm not moving. So um, that gives all that information up. You can alter the height of, of that and the brightness of it and everything. So you don't have to look down at your dashboard here to see what speed you're doing. Nice sort of dashboard, quite a nice, um, nice sort of uh, inside to it and everything. Comfortable seats, that's good. We'll just have a look uh, in the back. So looking at the back of the vehicle, you can just see about the huge spare wheel that blocks out a good lot of the view of the window. And I would actually take that off if that was mine. It's only the brackets here, you, you can take it off. There's a little recess that'll be left there, um, but I would take that off. Here's in the back of it, very plastic in the back, which that doesn't matter, that's all right, if it's a workhorse, work vehicle. Uh, underneath here, there's a nice sort of um, compartment underneath here. If I lift that up with the lid, you can see there, not quite sure what though that's a, probably a cover that goes over the top of this to protect it all yeah but that's what it is that will go on those on those clips there so a bit of a box there to store things your jack towing iron things under there and when you look forward there that gives you a view of what you're looking at that way you can see the headrests are folded down little light windows up coming up through here to lighten this up a little bit um seats fold down obviously you've got um looking at this i think that yeah they they fold all those three individually or all together or two of them or one of them they're all different combinations tires on it these ones have got good year they're a little bit more off-roady than normal tires but they're not not that brilliant when you look they're wranglers that's what these are so they are a bit more off-roady than some size of these are 255 50 for 20 so 20 inch alloys this has got on it white i'm not a big fan of white vehicles myself some people are i know it's a color that's come back recently but i'm not a big fan of it it's got this look about it because some of the headlights are hidden under here i do think it's got a bit of a mean look about it at the front you know it's like it's frowning when you look at that uh, anyway that's the layout of the vehicle. you can see these mirrors huge chunky mirrors there is a little bit of aerodynamics but not as much as the discovery and i think these are causing a lot of wind noise through here and also the shape of the mirror so yeah I, i'm uh i don't know jury's out on it at the minute anyway we'll crack on and head into uh um woodhall uh to see uh how some sprayers i'm on a quite a narrow country road here in lincolnshire uh, but the pickup of it is really really good this engine is really responsive i do like this engine it is it is really good and i don't know what the performance is or the fuel economy um i'll uh, see if i can reset it but i do like this engine it's a smooth engine it's very quick very powerful and the pickup of it is is, is really good so um you know, the, there's good points about this vehicle uh, and there's things i don't like about it but but um when you look at spending the amount of money you are on these cars now uh it's just uh, just unbelievable but when you compare this to um the old uh, the old defender <laughs> obviously there is absolutely no comparison the other thing I've noticed is when you're going at speed and I'm doing 63 now but I'm not in headwind there's a really distinct wind noise from these big mirrors and the windscreen yes it is um, aerodynamic and angled but I'm just wondering whether there's a bit of noise from these corner pillars as well and uh, again compared to the discovery there's I think there's more noise here than there is um, in my discovery so that's another thing I haven't noticed but lovely driving position very comfortable lovely engine um, but there is this lag as well when you're coming up to a junction which I'm coming up now if you come to a junction and you don't quite stop before you take off again you put your foot down to go and there's this lag and all of a sudden it picks up and it's like someone's thumped you up the back end and this is the D300 engine in, in this uh, Defender. My Discovery has got the old three litre in it because it was one of the first um, Discovery 5s in Lincolnshire. It's six years old now. and But it's the same. It's got that lag at a junction that I'm coming up to now. I'm coming up to the A15 um, now, if I can get out, which I can. And it's got this um, coming now there it won't pick it up on the on the on the camera uh, so you, you won't be able to tell but i can feel it definitely but otherwise you know it's a nice enough vehicle but i don't know whether it warrants the price tag this is quite um high spec one and i suspect this is probably 90 grand i don't know ninety thousand pounds huge money and look what else you can get in the land rover range um and for me i think i would probably rather buy 
um, something else, spend less money and probably buy a two year old Discovery or something like that um, instead, of, instead of this. So I've just arrived at Housams. There we go, in the back end of Woodhall Spa. So we'll just carry on now and see if we can see how the sprayer's getting on. So I've got to Housen's yard or their workshop. This is our sprayer. But before we look at that, I'll just have a look down here at one the building here, which is going to New Zealand. So this is our sprayer. Still a fair bit to go on it. So this is the sprayer. We've just been talking about the Green Star because we're having Green Star yep. on it. And um, I was meant to bring the dome with me in the screen, but I haven't because it's not ready apparently. It's going to Denmark, you were saying, to be tested by yes. your suppliers. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So what they're doing, we've developed a, a, a new hardware unit which will essentially take the um, isobus signal out of the John Deere screen, yep. convert it into our cam, yep. which means that our system will be running the machine mm. and using the John Deere Center uh, or John Deere Green Star as some information, really. Yep. So all the information will be taken from the John Deere GPS. Yep. Um, all of the data logging behind it will be as per standard John Deere machine. Mm. Yet Arm essentially does the complicated part of converting that requirement mm. into the actual output yeah. on the machine. So the, mon the monitor that's going to be in the, from your end, what type of monitor is that? You're saying that's an iPad type? Yeah, yeah. so we're actually, the, the current TMC screen, which is sort of our own unit, yeah. um, we're actually moving away from that in, in this installation and we're going to be putting sort of a, a flat tablet iPad yeah. pad air mm. um, with an external computer on, right. on it there. So it'll be a, a nice screen in the mm. cab mm. because it's because the John Deere screen is the actual control center for spray operations, that's the one that's going to be used yeah. the majority of the time. Right. Our screen is mainly there, so it can control all the background mm. stuff, but also it's your, your engine mm. diagnostic mm. center. That and it's the thing. first one you've gone away, or you've done, that's not been your system. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Sure. So, no so you can just see these housings are similar to ours, but they're a different design to ours, aren't they? A, an updated design. Updated design, yeah. Wheel motors are not proclaimed. No, they are downforce wheel motors with bumpy Gioli reduction hubs. Right, yep. Engine? A Mercedes six cylinder, uh, 240 horsepower. Yep, that's good. Uh, we've got obviously clean water tank there, uh, wash tank. You've got a fuel tank underneath. How big's the, the fuel tank? So the fuel tank is 300 litres. That's yeah. this front one here. Yes. And then behind it, there's an 100, 110 litre hydraulic tank. Hydraulic tank, right. Yep. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, looking in the cab, the cab is a forage harvester cab, is yep. it? Yeah, class, class. class Jaguar, yeah. Well, I'm just, am I right, go in? Yes, of Yeah. Quick looking in here. Nice cab. Great visibility out the back. Lots of glass area, curved as well. Nice control controls there. So where's our screen? Our screen. So we'll what we'll do, so that. because it's the first one, we'll build the machine as a standard TMC yeah. Harrier. Yeah. And then we'll swap this screen out. This one will become the John Deere Green Star. Yeah. And then we'll locate the actual, the iPad on the rail. On the rail right there. there. Right, and it'll go on the side there. That's right. That's for the rear cameras. Yep. There and the same. Looking in the roof of the cab, we can see for the light. Yep. Great design there. What's this here? Is this a fridge? Uh, no, that's the Just fuse a, box up there. Ah, so fuse that's box. The, the integrated cab fuse box up there. That's neat. Um, the machine fuse box is underneath the uh, armrest there. Yep. Um, so you can actually pull on the two handles on the on the armrest here. Do that one ah, and we slide it back and open it up. Slide it back and open it up so you've got access that. that's good. down there for the fuse box. And then underneath the, your buddy seat here yep. is where your nice big fridge is. Oh, that's where your fridge underneath that buddy yep. seat. That's good. There's, yep. there's a little storage cubby hole in the corner there. In there, yeah. Yeah, excellent. And so then, it's nice because it's a recognisable space. Yeah, and then that one, I think we're all about that little cubby hole putting our two-way radios in yep. there. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, great, great visibility and a nice comfy seat as well just been in this cab you can just see the quality of it do you ever have any any um, supply problems with it coming from germany no absolutely no. fine i mean to be honest with you we quite often have we go and have a look but we quite often have six of these in our yard right. at any one time yeah, yeah. Um, the guys at class are, are, are really good to work with as well yeah. so um, we often find that they're ready for us before we need them yeah. which is how we need but them. the quality so, shines through doesn't it, oh, you when, just, it when you look at yeah, it yeah there's just no there's just aren't any issues mm. this is the induction hopper where we've put the chemicals in and obviously you push that, that down and that squirts fresh water up there and win rinses the inside of the cans. Um, that does that. And then we've obviously got, there's a lot of guards to go on the side here. And this is the filling part 
where the water goes in, but there's a lot of guards um, to go around here that you won't see that. That'll all be hidden behind guards. Um, and then uh, what else have we got? Uh, we have in a 4,000 litre tank on here, 32 metre booms, airbags here as well, which gives its fantastic ride for the sprayer and the booms as well. Then looking around the back, what else has we got here? You've got your big 20 litre air reservoir in there for oh, yeah. section shut off, suspension. Yeah. Um, and as we move around to the back frame here, you've got your, your main hydraulics balls in the middle for your, your boom operations. Yeah. Um, uh, VG Rams for the uh, boom levelling, I believe you have them in the boom Yeah, levelling. that's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, VG Rams which do the, the incline and the decline. Hydraulic yaw and then, yeah, just general hydraulic. Similar to ours at the back, but again, redesigned yeah. a bit and just has kept updating it. That's always so essential, what we work, how we work is it, it, it's iterations. Yeah. So yeah. everything that is on yours is very similar to what you've got here. We have just worked on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. Just try to make things. A lot of the improvements really come to making our lives easier, easier. Now yeah. it goes together. Mm, yeah. Um, more than anything. So of course that slides that this that the rollers here. They they go up and down that mass to the top, and that's what gives us the boom height as well. Yep. So great. And then we've got the spray pump on the side here. So these are your, your, uh, your ECUs, your electronic yeah. control units for the machine. There's three of these across the machine. I wondered um, if it was, yeah. The main one up in the en in the uh, engine canopy there is for your tractor steering functions. Right. Um, we refer to this one as the master, so this is oh, your right, yeah. back. This yeah. does your regulation, yes. your ball valves, etc. And then the slave is mounted on the boom, and that does your boom hydraulics. Boom, yeah. And of course, all the pipes you can just see in that, what do you call that curved plastic part? They're all protected there, aren't they? Yeah, all pipes, yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're really neat there and just stops the booms, the pipes kinking and getting any damage. Yeah, and it's, it just keeps them together. Yes, it keeps them all together, yeah. The wheels we're having, these these aren't our wheels, no, are they? No. Do. These are a set of runners that we've got yeah, on site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. This machine is just about ready to um, sort of get up and around site so we can start fitting the uh, spray tankers. So what you do with this when it's ready, before you put the spray pack, you, you test them on the road, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. I know obviously when you used to be and led them in the village where we are, we'd see them all around the village like this before yeah. they had a spray pack yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the time we are finding now because of how we're able to put these machines together, the machines are more complete when they yeah. go on their road test. Yeah. Uh, what we do as well, we don't we don't build the machines in a single bay. They'll get to a certain point and then they'll move down sort of to the bottom end of the workshop or outside yeah. of the boom yeah. tank. Yeah. We're just going to have a look at the booms now, and that's the outer boom section that's just been assembled. So these are our booms, and that is the previous design. So there's some, quite a few changes to them. And looking at this straight away, hydraulic pipes. Yeah, that's right. That's good. That's a big improvement, I think. Stainless return line on top as well. Yes. Uh, the actual spray line itself is exactly the same. Yeah. So uh, we're having we're having four um, spray nozzles on there, and then the other line, the other one there, is going to be for the fertilizer dribble bars. Yep. And that's yep. just swapped in the cab in the display. Yep, same absolutely. as same yep. as now. Swapped in the display, it can be done manually or automatically. Yeah. These are the boom levelling sensors. So on this 32 metre boom, how many will there be? Five. Five. Yep. Differences then, obviously the oil pipe, hydraulic pipes one. Yep. You've got the um, return there again. That's yep. different. What else is the different? Uh, structurally, this, the version, this iteration of this boom will have the same structural improvements yep. and changes. Um, really what we've done um, is taken what we did on the double fire boom last year and just introduced a bit more hard pipes on the boom yep. to a production time um, neatens the, yep. uh, the solution. It, the it does, yeah, yeah, it does. You can see that, yeah. One thing we're always particular with at the farm is, is paint, and this has got a nice finish on it and powder coated. Yes. Yep. Shot blasted beforehand. Yep. Yeah. Primed as well. Primed, right. And uh, yeah, really good and made locally as well. Uh, not far from me so yeah good finish to here nice gloss and round all the welds no sharp corners so really good a few second hand machines here that's the spirit air ride 
bomb proof that one's been out a number of years that's been reworked from the sprint and then this one is a super sprint you can just see a little bit bigger we've had one of these as well a few years ago and then coming around to the tanks so this one on the right here you say is ours yes. you think one of those yep. that one yeah, 4,000 litre. So, what is it, GRP or something, is it they call yeah, it? Yeah, five no, GRP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a clean water tank. Just oh, that's clean. clean. That's, that's easy to this gap, yeah. Right, that goes in there, yeah. What's that, 400 litres? Yeah, 400 yeah. litres, yeah. And then, you were right earlier, you've got a load of cabs here. Yeah, yeah. Are they all the same? Uh, the only difference is the seat. So you've got, this is the, the one that's standard on the Harrier, so this is yours. So yes. The, the leather high back climate controlled seat. Yeah. And then the Air Ride um, has how the Air Ride and the Spirit have the standard. Oh, seat. standard seat without headrest. Uh, we put a headrest in it. All oh, right, yeah. Um, but it's not leather. Uh, right. And it's not climate controlled. But cab size and everything's the same. Oh, yeah, identical yeah. cabs, uh, yeah. identical armour. In fact, ed everything is identical apart from the seat. seat. It's easier. Yeah, that yeah. Brilliant. So that's had a, a bit of an update on our sprayer. Still not quite sure yet how long it will be. Got, still got a bit of work to do and with having Green Star on it. That's just going to lengthen it a little bit. That's all got to be checked, tested and checked and married into uh, the house of TMC. Anyway, we'll now get back in this Defender and drive back to Ledham, which is about a 40 minute drive. Quite uh, funny, before I left, I spent about 15 minutes trying to um, adjust the steering column on this Defender and I could not find the button underneath but I'll just show you what uh, what I uh, what I found and thank you to Michael Bailey for um, uh, telling me what to do with it. So the steering column is normally is a lever or something underneath here that you pull down you can alter it in or out and then uh, I phoned Michael on the way here because he's got a discovery that I have the same um, uh, steering wheel thing as this he says it's probably electric wardy technology so when i told him how much this was he said definitely electric and lo and behold on the side we have a button that says auto and if i get in now i should say that will start it Let's... there we go and then if i can move that there we go look at that so that button And then, is it, yeah, pull the button towards you. And then push the button, moves the steering wheel. Well, 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 why didn't I think of that? Actually, just one thing looking at this as well. My Discovery's got the rotary gear selector down here. That to me would have been better in the middle because from my eyes where I'm looking, it's hiding some of the controls here. When you look round there, we've got the, auto engine um what do they call it when you're stopping at traffic lights and things that's behind there there's hill descent suspension settings as well suspension lock various things are behind that button and to my mind and again having those two there i'd have liked to have seen that in the middle and then those controls that way for the passenger and these controls this side for the driver but anyway and have that knob in the center of the vehicle but that's my ocd coming out because i just like things to be symmetrical just arrived back at Marshall Land Rover in Lincoln. This is the Defender I've had for the day. Yeah, nice vehicle, but just a few things about it. I just don't like that huge spare wheel on the back for one thing. And uh, yeah, various other things. I don't think it's uh, it's for me. So we'll just see my discovery and what they've done. Hopefully they've washed it and uh, got that all ready for me. And it'd be like um, putting my foot back in an old slipper. There we go, all washed and ready. Looks, looks good. So just back in my discovery, look at this straight away, how much lighter this is inside here with having a roof and everything, and sunscreen, sunroof. I know they're not the same vehicles, they are different vehicles, but I think this is definitely better for me. And of course, the other thing, we haven't got those hooking great mirrors. Look at that, much better. Streamlined, aerodynamic, wider field of vision, just much better. So, yeah. I think when you look at this, all told, and the visibility and everything out the back, when you look much better than the, the view with the spare wheel on that back door. 
So that's it for a midweek Wardy's Waffle. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you at the weekend.